In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. September 14th is a great uh, feast in the Orthodox Church. And it, it's a, another historical reminder of an event that took place when Helena, the mother of Constantine, went looking for the, the, the true cross. And when she found it, they lifted up the cross and they began singing like, Oh God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. You know, the hymn that we sing every September 14th. Chalash Yarab Shabak. Oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. It's a wonderful feast. At St. George in Montreal, this is when our church was finally inaugurated by the late Archbishop Anthony Bashir. So every year the bishops came for their feast day. And the church is decorated with beautiful flowers and we have the loving, the, the, the beautiful smell, smelling, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the green that we use when we bless with the cross. Basil. Basil. If the aroma fills the church. You know, that's the beauty of the Orthodox Church. We can smell, taste, see, hear. All the divine, all the divine stuff. That's what's so beautiful about our faith. In any case, Helena found the cross and they began chanting. And now whether it's all true or not, I don't know. But the story has nourished Christians from one generation to the next. That she has found the cross of Jesus Christ. The gospel reading that day is all about the crucifixion. But the epistle is completely different. The epistle is like this. Brethren, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to the Christians. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, in this particular epistle, it, it, it really brings out something very, very precious. Greek philosophy dealt with the acquisition of wisdom. Plato in the world of ideas, the acquisition of, 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 of wisdom, Aristotle. Socrates, Plato. And their, believe me, their, their philosophical, uh, th their, philosoph their philosophy did influence many Christians like Origen. But the Jews always were people of history, that which is concrete. In fact, the idea of time, according to the Greeks, 
time was cyclical, a revolving cycle, and and they gave birth to a whole to what we now call Gnostics in the early church. But we have them now too, by the way. But the Jews, history is a beginning and a consummation and an end. That's why we read in Revelations when he says, I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. So you see that here in this in this in this epistle of Saint Paul to remind us of the sophistry that we hear every day. We hear every day such nonsense about religion, about faith. All these Protestant sects make up their own. I mean, I have, I know kids in Montreal that started their own church, and they call it, you know, we are, we only follow the Bible. It's nonsense. The church is community, and from the community comes the word of God. But for the feast of the cross. This epistle was read to instruct us that the death of Christ and that Christ himself is foolish for this philosophical so-called sophistry. Once when I was in Oxford, I had to give a lecture in Oxford many, many years ago, believe it or not. And when I finished my lecture, I, I decided I would go to different classes or different lectures. So I happened upon the, a, a lecture that was dealing with the philosophical foundation of the Holy Trinity. So I sat there and I listened to these geniuses of, the, of Western Christian Christianity speaking in their exalted philosophical language about uh, uh, the Trinity. Oh, I got a headache. So finally, after listening for I don't know how long, I raised my hand and I said, I'm just a humble priest from Montreal of the Antiochian faith, Antiochian Orthodox faith. And for us, the Trinity is experienced and not explained. The Trinity is worshipped and not dissected by philosophical concept. The Trinity is a summation of eternal love and not just an item for us to make a syllogism. So the wisdom of this age leads to nothing. Now we have all these talks. We've been listening on television with a, a virus about science, science is the answer. We listen to science. So they made a notion that science is abstracted from faith. You can't abstract faith from science because they have a theory you have to have faith that this theory that you have is going to work. It's going to, it's going to be proven. Everything begins with faith. And in the case of the early Christians, 
when they included this the sections in the from the in, in the Christian community it later was incorporated in the Bible. The notion of the cross and the resurrection is completely nonsense to any philosophical system. When I taught the class in, in, at McGill, the only students that got what I was saying were the Jews because they were told stories at home whether about the Passover or Yom Kippur they talked about the history of 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 the of Israel but the rest of the class that took political science and took blah blah philosophy and blah 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 some I don't know it took me it was much harder for me to make them understand the notions of 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 what was excuse me ontological what is beyond being god is beyond being and the cross the cross is that moment in in history in which christ gave his life up for us as one of the fathers said he ch Christ chases us in a mad love he gave himself up that we might have life now some people in the west take that that Christ died on the cross as a ransom he had to pay a price for our sins this is very juridical Christ didn't pay a price for our sins Christ loved us God loved us so much that he gave us his son that his son would give us life and when we in the church on Feast of the Cross. Hold up the tray of flowers. The flowers represent new creation. Because in the end, everything will be made new. And the fragrance of the kingdom. And the basil. And sing, O oh God, save thy people. And we kneel before thy cross. We bow down and worship. Thy resurrection we glorify. What, how, is there anything more noble and more beautiful? As one Russian philosopher said, the only true beauty is the beauty of Christ. And this is what we, this is what we celebrate in the Feast of the Cross. That Christ crucified in all of the Orthodox churches, you do not see a twisted cross above the altar. The human Jesus with uh, his, I mean, you've seen them in the Catholic churches. We always have the cross in, on gold, reflecting the kingdom the glory, the beauty of the kingdom, and always the cross points to the resurrection, not to misery and suffering, but to redemption. And you never see a lifted cross in any of our churches. It's flat. The service is flat. Christ calls us, as St. Paul says, Yet I liveth, but I liveth not, but Christ liveth in me. And this is the point of the Feast of the Cross. To reflect 
on the living Christ who lives in each and every one of us. What a wonderful statement. What a wonderful feeling. And this is what our society is really missing. Our society has just minimized and shelved all that which we as Orthodox hold dear and true. And our world, our nation, needs our witness. It needs the Orthodox Church to elevate this world to a new dimension of being. Like we raise up the cross, we say, Oh God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance and preserve the Orthodox faith in all believers. May he protect you that you will be a real that you will be a true believer in the shining light of the cross not to be described in words but experienced in faith in the, name of the father son and holy spirit amen if you like this video Please hit the thumbs up but, uh, on, on your on your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever. Put also the subscribe button. Please subscribe and push the notification so you'll know when uh, when we do these videos when they come out. Thumbs up, subscribe, notification. Remember those three things. And I'd be very grateful. God bless you.